It is not easy to publish design work. Actually, it is quite hard to publish any kind of academic work. However, designers are facing some specific challenges. And to understand these challenges, we have to go a little bit into the underlying factors of design and its relationship to design. Design has for long been taught uh, um, as a craft in the uh, polytechnical universities for a long time. And uh, at some point, they were also introduced um, at the level of universities. Now, the question that is, uh, comes forward is like, what makes design as being taught at a university different from a design as being taught at a polytech or when it's being taught as a craft? And the answer to that is that universities are committed to science. And therefore, the expectation is that design needs to become somewhat scientific as well. Now, good old case uh, Overbaker once pointed out to me that if you want to do scientific work in the area of design, you've got two choices. Either become, you become a bad engineer or you be become a bad psychologist. Neither of these choices did seem appealing to me at that time, so I undertook a, a bit of research to understand what a possible design science could be. I came across four different uh, approaches that are typically being taken uh, in uh, defining design science. Um, you have these people that consider design or the history of design um, as the science of design, similar to art history being the science of art. Sometimes design is also considered as a rational problem solving, and this type of uh, problem solving is then the specific uh, scientific aspect of it. Also, the knowledge that design creates needs to be organized in a systematic way, and that could also potentially be a form of design science. And most commonly, design methodology in itself is being treated as the topic of design science. In my personal view, um, all of these are necessary, but not sufficient to define design science. It doesn't actually define the phenomena on which the design science is supposed to uh, look at. In my view, quality is this missing piece of the puzzle. Um, designers need to uh, look at the quality between humans and artifacts. Now, the problem is that this kind of quality is very difficult to formalize. Um, it cannot easily be abstracted into uh, mathematical formulas. The knowledge of design is typically inside of the designers and not externally stored uh, in papers, formulas, or programs. Therefore, I believe that also a lot of the design work is best communicated by simply looking at it, experiencing design, trying it out. Looking at a painting is so much more convincing than just reading about it. So then, if design work is better felt and experienced than read about, then of course the question is, what do design journals then do? Now, much, much work uh, that is being published in the design journals uh, focus on design methodology. But in the same way that biology is not the science of how biologists work, uh, design, or design methodology can also not be the science of design. Even if we do consider uh, the activities of a designer to be um, the focus of design science, then this human behavior is actually a form of psychology. It is understanding how people solve problems. One other thing that comes up quite often is the idea of design patterns. Um, so the idea is that you have um, you come up to a certain solution uh, to a problem, and what it turns out that, that this solution that you develop actually applies not just to one problem, but to a family of problems. And this kind of uh, pattern is something that you then write about. Um, the problem with this and you know, most other um, uh, publications in design is the generalizability of the results. Very often you see case studies or stereotypically you have, I had a problem X and I used this method Y and it resulted in the results Z and these results were good and that is then the paper. But the problem is, how can you generalize such knowledge to other cases? 
the design patterns might be a certain, to a certain degree an answer in the sense that the solution that you found might be uh, also suitable for um, other problems. However, it doesn't compare even close to the generalizability that the other sciences are uh, up to, and particularly uh, the sciences that deal with nature. The rule of, or the, the law of gravity applies to every molecule and not just to three or five different design problems. So generalizability, in my view, is the biggest problem that designers are facing when they want to publish their work. A lot of their work is individual experiences and not something that is translatable to other people and other problems. And this results um, very often, the expectation is that uh, design is supposed to be scientific, and if you put the Department of Design in the context of a whole university, you then see very big differences. So in New Zealand, we have uh, performance-based research funding, and all the universities and all the researchers are being evaluated once every six years on their performance. What you see here in this graph is the result for the University of Canterbury in terms of the average output per person split out over all the different departments over a period of six years. And what you see is that there, there is a dramatic difference in terms of the number of outputs that people produce. And outputs in this case is not just scientific papers published in journals, but actually the definition that's been used in the PBRF encompasses or includes also a lot of other different type of outputs. For example, a theater performance is considered an output. Still, the productivity varies largely. Moreover, it also heavily um, depends on the actual person. Not every person is productive. So here we see uh, the graph of all the people. Uh, uh, on the x-axis is just like the people, and on the y-axis is the output. So you see we've got one outlier which has over 450 outputs produced. And overall, we see that the top 20% of the people are responsible for 80% of the output. This is not too bad, since uh, very often it's argued that 20% of the people are usually responsible for 80% of the effects. Um, so disciplines work differently, and people work differently, and design is not as productive in terms of outputs as compared to other departments, in particularly engineering and science. Now these are some of the problems that designers are facing. Um, but publishing in itself actually is difficult. And one of the biggest problems is the peer review process. And it's not only the design community that actually suffers from this process, it is academia in general. But for designers specifically, if you made a certain design which works in a certain way and it has certain aesthetics to it, how can you judge it? How can you say this is true or this is false? The peer review process has typically two functions. One is to provide suggestions for improvement. And the other one is to judge the quality of the paper. Now, nobody ever claimed that the peer review process would be perfect, but there are two types of errors that occur. It can happen that you have a paper which actually isn't particularly good, but is being accepted, or you have a paper which is actually quite good, but is rejected anyhow. The more rigorous you make the peer review process, the more type 1 errors you receive, and the more relaxed you make the peer review process, the more of the type 2 error do you get. In my view, the peer review process, in terms of the judgment of quality, is fundamentally broken. It does not succeed at filtering scientific output. As a matter of fact, I dare to say that everything that gets written eventually gets also published. And I talked about this idea in one of the papers that I've written in the past. Now, some of you know me, and uh, you probably know that I was originally born in Germany. And one of the German speciality is complaining, or in German, nörgeln. In Germany, nörgeln is a form of high intellectual power. Finding something bad in even the most positive situation is a challenge in an art form. And I've been, practice, I've been practicing this skill for a long time. However, 
Um, and if you want to read about it, there's a nice book here written about an American author who actually lives in Germany and discusses this phenomena at length. But now it is time that we actually also uh, stop complaining about you know, a broken peer review process, but that we also come up with some new ideas about how can we make things better. And together with some colleagues, um, including uh, Hu Jun and Michael Lyons, we came up with the idea for a new journal. It is called Interaction Records. There are many journals out there, and you might argue that it's not necessary just to have a new journal. However, we do believe that this journal has some key uh, policies that are of great relevance to the audience of this conference, but also to all the other researchers in the area of human-computer interaction in general. Now, the twist of this journal is that we will only accept papers that have been rejected at least three times prior to the submission to interaction records. These papers, then, we will verify the rejections and then accept these papers into the journal without an additional peer review process. However, the comments that have been uh, given by all the previous peers are being published together with the article. The authors will have the opportunity to respond to all of these comments and have a final statement. In essence, what, you will, what we will uncover is the discussions around and beneath the scenes, similar to what you would normally experience at the Wikipedia. Wikipedia has a main article, but behind every article there's a discussion page. And very often the discussion page is more interesting than the article itself. Interaction records will make the process uh, and the discussion around papers transparent. And we do believe that any paper written by you that you feel so strongly about that you survive free rejections, that there will be something about this paper that is special. And we want those special papers. I would like to invite you to submit of our journal. And uh, it is my honor to uh, announce that uh, as of today, the submission are open to the HDI community and the design community. Please submit your workers to us. Thank you very much.